now available in paperback and Kindle Unlimited, The Man Crisis. Learn why so many men are struggling to find their way in an increasingly gynocentric world in The Man Crisis. Get your copy of The Man Crisis in paperback and Kindle Unlimited today. Last Sunday, Michael Bloomberg, the former mayor of New York City, announced his candidacy for the presidency of the United States. And as a resident of New York City for 46 years and someone who has lived under the term of Michael Bloomberg as mayor, I can tell you not to vote for Michael Bloomberg because he will not make America great again, nor will he do a great job of running the country if he is allowed to scale up many of the dysfunctional policies he implemented during his term as mayor of New York. Now, under Michael Bloomberg, New York City became a place that was only affordable to the wealthy, and most working class New Yorkers found themselves in a city they couldn't even afford to live in. In Michael Bloomberg's New York, the rent became too blank high, and most working class New Yorkers found themselves struggling to make ends meet as landlords began speculating as related to the rent rates and what they would do in their quest to speculate on rents was drive the rent here in New York to the point where it became unaffordable for most working class New Yorkers and most working class New Yorkers wound up paying almost half of their income to just pay the rent. And if Michael Bloomberg became president of the United States and decided to implement his business policies, he would make the rent to blank high all across the country. And most working class Americans who are struggling to pay their rent and their mortgage this would have to deal with the same speculators driving up the price of mortgages and rent like they're doing right now here in New York City, thanks to Michael Bloomberg's policy. So Michael Bloomberg, really, he drove up the price of rent here, and he made it harder for New Yorkers to be able to enjoy a quality of life because of the, him allowing these real estate speculators to go wild here in New York City. And them, dry, them going wild has made it where everyday working class people like police officers, firemen, teachers, and other working class men and women just have a hard time being able to make ends meet and pay their bills every month or even have a little bit of money to save. And in addition to Michael Bloomberg making the rent to blank high, your Michael Bloomberg also supported a lot of the gentrification, many call it, that wound up taking away a lot of the culture from many New York City neighborhoods. Because combined with the whole thing as related to the real estate speculation, we had a lot of businesses that were a part of the culture of New York City. They wound up closing because they found out that the rent was too blank high. Moreover, a lot of these neighborhoods lost their culture and their identity because of this gentrification where these companies came in and these developers came in. They drove out a lot of the local businesses and in their place, we got all of these chain stores and franchises. And these chain stores and franchises really didn't add much personality to the neighborhoods here in New York, like many of the local businesses used to. And they didn't really have a connection to the people in the neighborhood like the local businesses used to. So, yes, we got a lot of those businesses came here because of tax breaks and tax credits that they get received from the state and federal government. But a lot of those businesses, they really didn't have any heart or soul, and they didn't really have any sort of distinct products to offer. So it really took away from what made a lot of these New York City neighborhoods special. And what was really sad was during the Bloomberg era is that we saw a lot of great 
local bakeries, a lot of local pizza shops, a lot of great local restaurants wind up closing. And in their place, we got more CVSs, we got more Rite Aids, we got more Dunkin' Donuts. And these businesses, yes, they would come to the neighborhoods as related to a tax break and a tax credit. However, after a couple of years, they would wind up closing because those businesses were not performing in proportion to other businesses across the country. And instead of the neighborhood growing as a result of these businesses coming, what happened was these businesses would come, the corporation would get a tax credit, and then after the business would close, the neighborhood would be left with another big gaping hole as related to its economy, and most people wound up losing a local institution and this corporate institution, and again, we wound up losing jobs in the long term, and that was all due to Michael Bloomberg's economic policy. And I would shudder if Michael Bloomberg were to bring that policy nationwide, because it, with gentrification right now in many parts of the country, it's already doing damage the exact same way. And if he were allowed to bring that to other parts of the country, it would wind up destroying local businesses and destroying the economy. Meanwhile, corporations would be allowed to get all of these tax credits and tax breaks at the expense of everyday working Americans and those Americans would wind up out of a job and out of business while corporate businesses wound up taking their tax credits and money away out of the country in offshore accounts or just co putting it in their coffers and not investing in the communities like local businesses would invest in the community. Now, another issue I had with Michael Bloomberg during his term was his dysfunctional reform of the Department of Education. Now, Michael Bloomberg was given power over the New York City school system, something the former mayor, Rudy Giuliani, advocated for after all of the years of graft and corruption in New York City's Board of Education. And your Michael Bloomberg, after getting control over the public schools here in New York, I don't believe he did a good job as related to those public schools. Now, your Michael Bloomberg on the surface raised the standards for teachers, saying that they had to have a master's degree, and then he implemented the Lucy Calkins education system to replace the original education system, which many thought didn't work. But those changes really did not improve the quality of education here in public schools because I had a family member who was working in the depart in the public schools and she told me that the Lucy Calkins system that Michael Bloomberg implemented really didn't do a good job of preparing children as related to their elementary education because under Lucy Calkins system Kids were left to try to figure things out on their own without the support of a teacher. And oftentimes, they would jump ahead on things instead of working on basics like alphabets or basic sentence structure or even basic words. Kids were told to go f use a word wall and try to find words without finding the definition of the words. And in some cases, in order to meet benchmarks, oftentimes you would have teachers doing things like writing things for children and the children would copy them. So the Bloomberg education reforms really didn't help improve the quality of education for young children and the implementation of this Lucy Calkins system really did a lot of damage to a lot of young people and I see that damage right here on platforms like YouTube where we have adults who are mixing up words like there and T-H-E-R-E -E there and T-H-E-I-R there and W-E-A-R and W-H-E-R-E -E. and that's all due to Lucy Calkins 
education system, which really didn't do a good job of understanding that kids need a foundation in the basics and fundamentals of education before taking on more advanced topics. And the Lucy Calkin system has made it where a lot of kids actually started to hate reading because it was a it was all about having kids read all day long and didn't really focus on subjects like history or science and that was a big problem with the Lucy Calkins education system it was all about drilling reading into kids and so-called pushing literacy but the kids really didn't get much in turn yes they learned how to read but they didn't get to comprehend even worse we didn't get a foundation in history and this foundation in history is something that's very important that kids aren't getting and this is the reason why we have so many kids here in New York who don't even know their own American history they don't understand things like the Constitution they don't understand things like the Bill of Rights they don't understand things like the amendments they don't even understand think, um, historical events like the Civil War and that's all due to the Lucy Calkin system not focusing on a comprehensive history. Everything in New York City's education system was about reading, 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 and a fixation on reading at the expense of math, at the expense of science, at the expense of history. And we had an entire generation of kids grow up with a really worse education than my generation received, but with those apathetic teachers that came in from the 1970s and 1980s. These teachers who had master's degrees, they were hampered by the Lucy Calkins system, which was extremely rigid and literally dictated everything that a teacher could do and did not give teachers space to be creative or find ways to motivate children. Everything was prepackaged and everything had to be taught a certain way. And the management of this New York City education system by consultants, it literally was impossible to deal with. And it had many teachers like my family member having anxiety attacks and breakdowns because they were so frustrated by the policies the Lucy Calkin system put on people and the Department of Education insisted teachers go through. They wanted to blame teachers for every mishap or failure that a child had and I believe that that wasn't fair to those teachers out there because those teachers out there they could only do so much especially when they were dealing with children in places like the inner city a lot of these children who came from these single mother households there was only so much a teacher could do to educate them if their home environment was destabilized but the Bloomberg education system went out of its way to punish teachers and it went out of its way to have principals attack and berate teachers because I've heard about how teachers were being verbally abused and being derided for not getting kids to benchmarks and everything was all about getting these benchmarks but not about making sure that the education was quality and that was one of the more frustrating things about life under Michael Bloomberg was watching my family member deal with this dysfunctional education system, which was more about bullying and threatening people. And the great irony was they were talking about an anti-bullying program for kids. Meanwhile, you had principals bullying, harassing, and intimidating lots of teachers in the classroom in order to meet these benchmarks. And on some cases, some of the teachers would regularly fudge these numbers in order to meet these benchmarks, or ironically, bringing back many of the whole I, of the concepts that were used in your social promotion, something your Michael Bloomberg said he wanted to end. However, a lot of teachers, in order to meet the benchmarks, wound up fudging the numbers and technically wound up socially promoting many young children in, into upper grades that the, even though they hadn't mastered the material, all because they wanted to meet the benchmarks and they didn't want to get penalized 
by Michael Bloomberg's Department of Education. Now, your Michael Bloomberg also supported another policy here in New York that was very detrimental to many black citizens here in New York. And that policy was stop and frisk. Now, stop and frisk was something that I believe came from the Giuliani era, but your Michael Bloomberg was a strong advocate for stop and frisk. And the NYPD, under stop and frisk, if they saw a suspicious person, they would stop that person, ask them for ID, and then they would frisk that person in the hopes of finding a weapon or finding if there were warrants on that individual. However, this policy was not implemented to target primarily all citizens in the same proportionate way. It disproportionately targeted black men primarily, and stop and frisk was used to harass and intimidate black males on the regular. And thanks to this policy, many black men were terrified to go outside here in New York, and they often knew that if they went outside, they would be the first ones targeted by this whole stop and frisk campaign. Now, the stop and frisk campaign was basically racial profiling in a brand new package, and after several groups filed lawsuits, it was deemed unconstitutional. Now, your Michael Bloomberg, again, was a big supporter of stop and frisk, and he always adamantly defended stop and frisk at numerous news conferences, and he was extremely abrasive as he was defending stop and frisk in policing the city. Your Michael Bloomberg, as I see it, was extremely disingenuous a few a week ago when he apologized for stop and frisk, and he's absolutely full of it if he believes that black men like myself are going to accept his apology. Because we know that that apology is just pandering for the black folk. And every black person out here in America, you need to know that that apology was disingenuous and he's just pandering to get black votes. And he really isn't concerned about black people, especially when you consider incidents like the death of Sean Bell. Now, most people have, don't remember the death of Sean Bell here in New York, but I was here for the death of Sean Bell here in New York, where several police officers were doing undercover work at a strip bar, and it led, and your Sean Bell was celebrating his, his um, bachelor party at that strip bar. Now, things got out of hand because Trent Benefield was alleged to have talked about having a gun, and then as these two, as the undercover cops and Sean Bell, Trent Benefield, and Jose Guzman got into a scuffle, they all got into a car, and then the police officer shot at that car, murdering Sean Bell. Now, the Sean Bell case was one of the incidents in Michael Bloomberg's tenure, and he had a callous indifference to the loss of Sean Bell's life. And this callous indifference that he had to Sean Bell's life is very similar to what Barack Obama had to the murder of Trayvon Martin, the murder of Michael Brown, and the murder of numerous other black men here in America. So black men here in America, and Americans in general, you really need to think about before you vote for Michael Bloomberg, because if he was callous and indifferent to Sean Bell's murder, then he's going to be callous and indifferent to the murder of other black men, like Barack Obama was callous and indifferent to the murders of black men, like Trayvon Martin, Michael Brown, um, Alton Sterling, Philando Castile, numerous black men who wound up losing their lives under the Obama presidency, and you're going to vote for the same man from the same party, which had callous indifference to the deaths of other black men. And in addition to Michael Bloomberg's indifference to black, the lives of black men here in New York with Stop and Frisk and the Sean Bell incident, we also saw your Michael Bloomberg participate in policies 
that were extremely detrimental to Americans. He was so controlling to the point where he wanted to go out of his way to so-called ban sodas. And this, I thought, was an extreme reach for any politician. Your Michael Bloomberg, along with the governor of New York at the time, David Patterson, they wanted to go out of their way to be a nanny over, Amer over New Yorkers, talking about um, New Yorkers are obese and New Yorkers drink too much sugar, and they wanted to ban sodas here in New York. Now, according to my United States Constitution as an American citizen, the Constitution states that Americans have the, uh, the life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. And if people want to drink soda as part of that life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness, then that's their choice. If they wind up with consequences like health issues, then that is their choice in a country that provides them with the freedom of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But you're Michael Bloomberg because he wanted to control people's so-called health. He wanted to ban sodas here in, the, in New York City and pass legislation with the city council to try to control the way people ate in this country and drank in this city. And I don't believe that any government official has a right to tell people what to eat, nor does a government official have a right to tell people what to drink. And that's not their right, and it's it, all that's going to do, what that type of behavior it shows is a desperate need for control, and someone who is so insecure about their own ability to control themselves that they believe they need to control others. And that's a big problem with Michael Bloomberg. We don't need a president who's going to be a nanny over, new, over American citizens the way Michael Bloomberg tried to be a nanny over New Yorkers. Most Americans believe in having their individual freedom and liberty. And when you have a man who talked about banning soda, one of America's iconic drinks, it, it takes us back to the time of prohibition of the 1920s and the early 1930s. Because if you have someone who has done this on a local level, there's definitely a plan to do it on a national level. And if he does try to do this on a national level, it could lead to the return of things like organized crime, because your average American is going to want to consume these products. And if you call yourself trying to be a nanny over the United States, all that's going to do is create a black market for those products. And all that's going to do is create more crime, excuse me, for those products. So your Michael Bloomberg with his nanny state, all he's going to do is lead to the increase in criminal activity and He's, his policies were not really beneficial to New Yorkers overall, and his policies really didn't improve the quality of life for New Yorkers overall. As someone who, again, has lived here for 46 years through Mayors Koch, Mayors Dinkins, Mayors Giuliani, and Mayor Bloomberg and de Blasio, I can say that we really started to see the decline of New York City under Michael Bloomberg, especially under Michael Bloomberg's second term. That's when we started to see a serious shift in New York's quality of life because Michael Bloomberg was more focused on trying to be a nanny over the state instead of trying to create policies to maintain the quality of life in an effective fashion. Now, your Michael Bloomberg proposes that he is a better alternative to Donald Trump, but I don't believe he is qualified to be the President of these United States because he just did not show me that he could run New York City effectively and he didn't do a good job of running the, the city overall. So when I look at his policies on education, his the way he's driven up rents here in New York, and the way 
He just didn't handle situations like Sean Bell effectively. I don't see how he would be any better than Barack Obama, and I don't see how he would be better than Donald Trump. Now, I have my issues with Donald Trump, and I don't believe he is the best candidate for or the best president we have, but I don't see any Thing that Michael Bloomberg has to offer that would be better than Donald Trump because the argument that your Michael Bloomberg has is that he is not Donald Trump but when I look at his record as mayor of New York just like Bill de Blasio his record is worse than anything Donald Trump would have to offer I mean I look at his record and I look at Donald Trump's record, and again, I don't see anybody that would any that I believe anybody should vote for. When I look at Michael Bloomberg, I don't see a strong candidate, I don't see a strong leader, and I don't see a vision for taking America into the mid-21st century. Here we are almost a quarter into the 21st century, and I don't see anybody on the opposing party side that I believe would be qualified to be the next president of the United States. Because if Michael Bloomberg's argument is he's not Trump, I'm sorry, but that's just not good enough for me. I need to see some tangibles on the table, and I need to see some sort of vision for what direction this man wants to take the country. I'm sorry, but you just can't come to me with, I am not Donald Trump. I am not Donald Trump is not good enough. Telling me that you're not a racist like Donald, like you allege Donald Trump is, is not good enough. When we consider what Stop and Frisk was, what we consider Sean Bell was, and the, and the handling of Sean Bell, what does Michael Bloomberg offer to most Americans, because if he's offering the same thing that your um, is offering New York, if he's offering the same thing New Yorkers were offered under his term as mayor, then I don't see much he's bringing to the table. Because when I listen to Michael Bloomberg on as related to his campaign, he's pouring all this money into ads. But those ads aren't saying anything that tells me that he has anything to offer America outside of he's not Donald Trump. And that, again, is just not good enough when you consider his track record and you consider everything that went on during his dysfunctional eight years as mayor. When I look at Michael Bloomberg, I don't see a qualified candidate for running for these pre for the president of these United States. I don't see a vision for where he wants to take the country in four years. I don't see a direction he wants to take the country in four years. And I don't see a plan he wants to lay out for building a better America than your Donald Trump. And because he does not propose any tangibles for black people, I can honestly say this is not a candidate I would want to vote for, nor is he a candidate I would want to ever tell anyone else to vote for, because after living eight years in Michael Bloomberg's New York City, where the rent is too blank high, where the schools are worse than what they were before, and where New York City started to decline under his tenure, I don't see a man who would do a great job of running these United States. I only see a man who would possibly start running America in further into the ground than your Barack Obama did during his eight years as president of these United States. If you'd like to see me make more videos like this, you can donate to my Patreon, my PayPal, or my Cash App by clicking the links in the description box. And if you want to pick up some of my SJS Direct publications, you may do so by clicking the link to Amazon.com. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available for the first time in paperback. Stop simping in the workplace. Men, learn what you need to know in order to protect your job from workplace predators with Stop Simping in the Workplace. Available in paperback at online booksellers everywhere.